Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Larson. And I'm Zach Larson. And together we own and operate Togiak River Lodge, located just a few miles from Bristol Bay and the village of Togiak. Our silver fishery kicks off in the first week of August and is generally winding down by the 20th of September. Because of the large numbers of returning silver salmon and their extremely aggressive nature, anglers are not generally limited in the ways in which they pursue these fish. A wide array of tactics work and work well. With that being said, we have four go-to methods that we want to share with you today. These are methods that you can employ anywhere. There are decent numbers of silver salmon, not just on the Togiak. Two of the methods we will cover today can be implemented with light spinning or casting rods, and two of the methods will require the use of fly rods and reels. For lodge spinning rods, we prefer seven and a half foot medium light to medium power, extra fast action rods with a sensitive tip and lots of backbone. Rod ratings can vary greatly from manufacturer to manufacturer, so it can be difficult to find a rod that is light enough and sensitive enough that also has enough backbone to put serious pressure on hot silver. In our search for the quote unquote perfect lodge yeah. silver rod, we found the following rods to be well suited to our needs without breaking the bank. Number one is the Cabela's slash Bass Pro Shops Prodigy, model number PR76MLS dash XF dash one. Uh, these rods come in right at $99. They're a great rod. In fact, these are the rods that we did select for the lodge. Um, they are maybe just a touch on the light side, but we do a lot with smaller spinners and jigs, so they'll be well suited to our purposes. In fact, in our testing um, from rods readily available from, we'll say $75 up to $300, this was the lightest rod uh, in that selection of six or eight rods. Um, all of the rods that we'll go over today um, are essentially walleye rods. Um, in fact, most of these come from walleye specific series of rods. Uh, they're all seven and a half foot. They're all medium light to medium extra fast action rods. The next one in line uh, is the Shimano Compre. These MSRP at $99 as well. The model number on this rod is CPSWX76MD. Again, it's a walleye series rod. Now, the next one in line is the St. Croix Icon. These are a little bit more expensive. MSRP is $140 on these. They're a very well put together rod. They're finished very nicely. Um, again, this is a seven and a half foot. The model number is ECS76 MLXF. Uh, finally, the fourth one is the Fenwick HMG um, in, in a seven and a half foot spinning rod. Again, it's a medium power, extra fast action. Uh, these MSRP, I believe $99.99, just like the, the first two, um, again, a really good option for under $100. For Tokiak Silvers on a fly rod, we prefer 9 foot, 8 weight, single handed fly rods. We utilize both weight forward floating lines along with short sink tip lines depending on the method that we're using. The first method we will go over for Tokiak Silvers is one that has become all the rage in the last 10 years. From California, north along the Pacific coast to Alaska, there is no more versatile a method for catching silvers than twitching jigs. Traditionally, one quarter to half ounce lead head jigs with bodies of brightly colored fur and feathers worked in a rhythmic fashion through log piles, eddies, and backwaters to entice finicky lockjawed silvers into biting. Today, the options are limitless with many viable soft plastic bodies and baits available that lend themselves well to this method. The second method we will cover is the use of the classic inline spinner. Tried and true and extraordinarily simple, casting and retrieving these lures is easily accomplished by even the most novice of anglers. This method is great for those who don't like to linger in any one spot for too long. Water can be covered quickly and effectively, and if the fish are willing, the takes can be nothing short of violent. The third method we will cover is definitely more technical and challenging, but can be extremely effective at targeting finicky staged silvers. Stripping subsurface fly patterns like streamers and clousers is exhilarating. Oftentimes targeting fish that are within sight, this method puts on full display the predatory nature of silvers and just how agile they can be. Although similar in appearance to twitching jigs, most silver patterns are lighter and smaller and exhibit different characteristics in the water than do their heavier cousins. Finally, we will cover the use of large, topwater fly patterns to promote wildly exciting topwater grabs by big, bright silvers. Largemouth bass have nothing on these fish when they are in the mood to strike a lure on the surface. Large, fluorescent, completely unnatural presentations are the name of the game here. 
More often than not, no logical explanation exists as to why these fish bite what they do, but they, we know that they do, and that's part of the fun. Twitch and jigs prove to be the most versatile tool we have for targeting silvers on the Togiak. Whether the fish are tucked up in backwater areas and sloughs, hiding behind logs and brush piles, or are scattered through long, boulder-strewn runs, jigs can be effectively presented. More importantly, they are readily received by the fish. We use jigs from one quarter ounce up to one half ounce, with our most used size being three eighths of an ounce. Every river system seems to have a color that works best, and as is the case in most of southwest Alaska, pink is king on the Togiak, or some variant thereof. Most of our jigs are tied with some combination of rabbit fur and marabou, but three inch curly tail grubs, four and a half inch squid skirts, and three to four inch swim baits all work very well in place of the more traditional fur and feathers approach. Proper movement is key. I'll say it again a little louder for those in the back. Proper movement is key. The jig needs to rise, and more importantly, fall freely. A sharp flick of the wrist on the upstroke, followed by immediately dropping the rod tip, results in a sharp movement up by the jig and a subsequent rapid drop. Silvers love, love, love the drop. This action is repeated consistently at one to one and a half times per second. Maintain a steady rhythm. Do not reel more than one revolution between each snap of the wrist, even if some slack still remains. This is vital. Too much reeling and zero slack equates to horizontal movement of the jig when vertical movement is desired. If fish are present and won't bite, drop down a size or two. Downsizing can often provoke a bite from seemingly stale fish. If fish are present and you have presented your most trustworthy and consistent colors, quickly cycle through your full selection of color patterns. There are days where it makes all the difference in the world. Inline spinners are the tried and true standby. They are simple to make, simple to use, durable, and generally quite effective. In the same way that jigs and flies are very effective in low, clear water, so too are spinners in water that is slightly higher and more turbid. Spinners can be effectively fished with the same exact rod reel combo that you would use to twitch jigs. Rather than rising and falling rapidly, as the jigs do, spinners are designed to create flash and vibration in a horizontal direction. They lend themselves well to casts that are 90 degrees to the current, or casts that, are, that angle slightly downstream. Casts in the upstream direction are discouraged, as the spinner must be retrieved considerably quicker to avoid becoming snagged. The angler should allow the spinner to sink just long enough to get halfway to the bottom. Reel rapidly for two to four revolutions in order to start the blade spinning, then decrease the retrieve rate to the slowest speed possible that allows the blade to continue spinning. This is crucial. The number one mistake by novice and accomplished anglers alike is retrieving too quickly or too slowly. Hook sets are free with spinners. Do not be ashamed to imitate your favorite pro bass anglers hook set when fishing spinners. The bite can be violent and aggressive, or it can be so subtle as to result in a slack line and anywhere in between. If you feel any bump, tap, sudden heaviness, or complete slack, set the hook. Most commonly, we run number five spinners for silvers on the Togiak. Fours and sixes work, but number fives provide the perfect middle ground for physical size and weight. Nickel, silver, brass, and copper blades with a pink trailer are hard to beat. We make our own spinners at the lodge, but good commercial varieties are readily available. Blue Fox, Maps, Buds, and R&B Lure Co., just to name a few. Stripping large, weighted flies on a one-handed fly rod is more fun than a human should be allowed to have. It can also be one of the more frustrating things that a person can engage in if their methods or equipment aren't up to snuff. On the Togiak, we use 9-foot, 8-weight fly rods, as they are light enough to cast without too much fatigue, yet also provide enough power to handle fish in the 15-pound range. Spooled with a short sink tip line like the Jim Teeny Mini Tip, these setups work great for casting weighted silver flies and allow us to get the fly down into the zone, even in moving water. It is our experience that it is more enjoyable to cast a short sink tip than a full floating line with split shot on the leader. As with jigs and spinners, pink reigns supreme when it comes to fly color. We primarily use bunny clousers tied with straight cut rabbit fur, but marabou also works very well. A pair of medium dumbbell eyes and a few strands of flashaboo or crystal flash and you're good to go. We generally run a 3 to 4 foot tippet of 20 to 30 pound test monofilament, which aids in releasing without the use of a net. When retrieving the fly, it is important to keep your rod tip low to the water and strip rhythmically 1 to 1.5 times per second. 
The strip should be long and aggressive, 12 to 18 inches in length. A strip set or a hybrid strip and lift to drive the hook home is preferred. Silvers have bony mouths and with the inherent stretch in the system from the fly line, this method is preferred to really drive the hook home. The final method we will cover today is the use of topwater fly patterns. Traditionally, large deer hair and foam flies called wogs or polywogs have been the fly of choice. Hot pink and other bright colors, these flies hardly resemble a polywog at all, but rather a brightly colored, misshapen mouse. Brightly colored and completely unnatural. Just how the silvers like them. While these traditional patterns work, they often ride too high in the water. A fly that barely breaks the surface and has its appendages dangling below the surface is preferred. A large foam bead head with three strips of rabbit fur and a trailing hook works great. A standard weight forward floating line on a number eight rod is preferred with a four to six foot long tippet of 20 to 30 pound test monofilament. Focus on slow moving or dead water areas in or just above tidewater where fish are stacking up and staging. Calm days are preferred as wind ripples in the water drastically reduce the number of takes. Retrieve rate can be varied depending on the mood of the fish. Some days longer, more aggressive strips are the key. Other days shorter, more subtle movements are required. A good starting point is one to one and a half strips per second at 10 to 12 inches per strip. If a silver moves towards your fly or is following but not taking, do not slow down or quit stripping. Like a cat with a string, movement is essential. When presenting topwater offerings, don't linger too long. The aggressive fish will show interest within the first 5 to 10 casts. If no interest is shown, move on. We hope this presentation on Togiak silver fishing was useful and informative. For more information on fishing the amazing Togiak River, visit us at togiaklodge.com.